Yes, it is where the game starts and where things have kind of stopped, at least in its iteration from just 24 hours ago, is what the front office looks like as it relates to Travis Schlink and the Hawks. So he has stopped in his role of president of basketball operations. He yes. is stepping down from that position and he's going to transition into more of an advisory position to principal owner Tony Ressler. Meanwhile, effective immediately, GM Landry Fields will actually oversee the day to day operations for the Hawks. Now, Jarvis, this kind of sent a little bit of shockwaves locally, if you will. And I think it's one of those things where we're like, huh, what? We, we didn't kind of see it coming. And don't get us wrong, Travis Link is still remaining with the organization. And in fact, he actually made a statement earlier today, and I'll quote that. Tony and I have had mutual, multiple, honest conversations about some of the personal things I've been going through. I appreciate the counsel he has provided me, as well as the opportunity he gave me to be first-time GM six seasons ago. The timing feels right for me to take a step back and prioritize my family. That was Travis's statement. But my question is, when we look at this in its totality, is there more to this than what Schlink said? It has to be, right? Because just think about what what, what had happened with this organization within the past few years. You, you fire a coach midseason, yep. that coach that steps into that role then mm -hmm. takes that team to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then you have a little beef of strife going between the, the superstar – Trey Young and all that stuff and, and, and Nate McMillan going back and forth and reaching out to him, you know, before the season and going out to and spending some time with him and working with him out there in Oklahoma City. So all of those things kind of lead up to – and also, yeah, you have an owner who wants to win the championship and yeah. has talked about – anytime you put a microphone in his face about winning one and being willing to spend money if it makes sense – <laughs> you know, with that caveat, if it makes sense, if it's going to lead us to a championship, yeah, I'm willing to spend it to the luxury tax. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, people looked at the certain moves that Slank had made by obviously trading away Kevin Herter. Was that a move to say, hey, we're staying away from the uh, the, the, the luxury <laughs> tax because we aren't championship contenders? So it's right. just a lot of little things that I feel like that led up to this decision, because at the end of the day, if, if you want if you want to step away you know, uh, a lot of times there are some things that come with that. And I started to think about the situation with Rich McKay right before mm -hmm. he uh, was elevated or yes. moved into a, a stepped into a different role mm -hmm. or stepped down into a different role, how you want to word it. But the fact is that Rich McKay was well respected. Yes. I think you have to respect Travis Schlank and what he brought Absolutely. to the table, right? He brought yeah. in from the drafting, having an eye for talent with John Collins and Kevin mm -hmm. Herter and now A.J. Griffin and obviously Trey Young. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things, kind of you have to kind of give them credit for at least getting them to the point where they were able to make that run to the Eastern Conference Finals with Nate right. Miller stepping into that role. So I think, it, yeah, on the surface, he's stepping down and obviously some personal reasons. I get mm -hmm. that part, but I think it has a lot has to do with moving into the next phase of this championship chase, I guess. Yeah. I guess I can I put it like that. I would agree. And also, Travis Link, you have to give him a lot of credit for giving, and you, of course, being an Atlanta native, may say otherwise, but giving the Hawks arguably the two biggest free agency trips that they've ever gotten, because this has always been a place where free agents were like, hell to no, I ain't coming in. But you got Clint Capella here, and you got DeJounte Murray. And I do think that they wanted to come here, you know, exactly. Yeah, and that yeah. was something to where, you know, they it wasn't a forced trade or some like three way trade where you just lucked up on uh, CC or DJ that those were choices that they made. So mm -hmm. got to give Travis Link some credit. And I know Trey Young being here is part of it, but I mean, he drafted him for all intents and purposes. So mm -hmm. Travis Link gets the credit for making this a place, a destination. Right. I don't think, and the, here's the good news. I like the analogy and the comparison to Rich McKay because when Rich McKay shifted into a different role, it was not a negative situation. Rich McKay remains with the Falcons. He also remains a foremost authority, very well respected in the league. He sits on their major committees, rules committee, okay? So he still has a lot of respect within the Falcons organization, within the NFL overall. I think it's going to be similar for Travis Link, right? Now, that doesn't mean 
the tea leaves don't say at the end of the season he might not part ways and become a GM for another team. But what I am saying is I don't feel like if he becomes a GM for the team, another team is going to be like the 30th team in the league. Right. Right. I still think he'll have a good enough reputation such that if he ends up parting ways, he'll bounce back somewhere else. But again, it wasn't one of those statements where we we found out they mutually decided to part ways. That wasn't what was stated. He's still within the organization. So there's still a lot of respect and appreciation for what he brings to the table. I'm just kind of interested to see. I feel like, however, while I don't think it's a big deal, I don't think it's salacious or it's going to be scandalous. I think there is going to be a layer there that maybe we kind of don't know about yet. And I think that that layer could be a Nate McMillan. Now, Nate was asked this question. And funny thing is, I thought about it. I asked Nate a similar question a couple of years ago when he was brought on board officially as the head coach, just in terms of him being old school player, old school coach, dealing with a lot of new schoolers. But the question was also posed to him yesterday, and he had a very interesting response. I'm coaching in a different generation of players that I play with, Uh, really I kind of coached. And it's different uh, the way you communicate. Uh, the way the game is played uh, and how they see the game. You know, they, they, they see the game different than uh, when I played it and when I started coaching it. Yeah, and I think that's a very, yeah. I mean, it's consistent with the mindset that we thought Nate had. However, it does speak to kind of the continuing challenges that maybe he has meshing with and aligning with his superstar so that's where i was going in terms of the tea leaves right because when you think about where the trickle down effect might be i.e tony wrestler looking across his entire organization in his front office on the court on the sidelines is this something where maybe nate's on a little bit more of a hot seat that's going to get hotter and hotter if once he gets all five of his starters back and he's got his true sixth man in Bogdan Bogdanovich, things don't get better. Like, is this also a little bit of tea leave reading that we have to do for what happens with Coach Nate? Uh, yes, uh, it's a short answer, but I, I think from a long answer, <laughs> from a long answer, uh, I, I think that you have to like really lead, read between it, right? Because that's the that's the thing that, you know, as far as with the, with the NBA and how things are constructed, right? We know that, Normally the, the coaches are the first to go, yeah. and we but we've seen you know the coach go. That coach was was Lloyd Pierce, right? So yeah. if you look at you know Nate McMillan having a little grace, like hey, I took this team from poop to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I should be able to get some grace there, right? Now, but how about the guy that you know that's making decisions from a personnel? He steps down. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's one change. The guy that was brought in back in June as the general manager, Mm -hmm. he kind of stepped down from that role, right? Handling all all of those decision-making skills, having all that, right? And and getting Landry Fields' feet wet from Mm -hmm. the general manager standpoint, having that opportunity. Now, Travis Slank steps down, and we got new new blood in there, right? Mm -hmm. New 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 set of eyes on things. And I think that Tony Ressler, he doesn't mind being the bad guy. Right. He strikes me as a guy with a lot of money and saying, you know what? I don't mind telling people, hey, it's time for you to go. We appreciate yeah. your service and you're going about your business. And I think that Nate needs to be very careful about being this interest, like looking within. Because when you look within, that means you're looking back on things and and saying like, uh, uh, is something about to go down now? Because that's the kind of way he sounded. He's just talking about the different generations and yeah. being being that guy that's, you know, things are just different. And, mm-hmm. and, and it, it just makes it seem like he's struggling to make that adjustment, right? Yeah. Just from the way, from the sound of it, right? Mm-hmm. I know he's he's done the, the right things to try to, you know, make a relationship better with Trey, because I think that at the end of the day, this is what it all boils down to. Oh, God, that's yeah. the relationship yeah. that matters. So, yeah, I think Nate needs to go ahead and get this ship righted so we won't have to continue to have these conversations. But I think that if it comes down to the end of the season and you're talking about playing tournament and and getting bounced out of the first round of the playoffs, Mm -hmm. I I see Tony Ressler 
standing on top of the mountain saying, yep, this was my decision. And we are reworking some things yeah. about this structure, structure of the organization. And I want Landry Fields to be able to pick the next guy. Yeah, I would say the same. And I do think that it is a struggle because right. Nate is who he is, just like the rest of us are who we are. And then mm -hmm. we all get faced with something that makes us either have to make a slight shift, a five degree shift, or maybe we got to do a whole 180. And right. I would suspect this, in this case, this is a 180 for Nate. So yeah. I believe he's doing a solid job. He's doing the best that he can. It seems like he's fine with every other player on that squad. It just seems like the one that, like you said, matters the most, there's a little bit of a challenge there. And I do hope that they're able to come to a middle ground. But honestly, I don't think that's Nate who has to get that together. I think that's Trey. Because I think Nate has done as much olive branching as he possibly could. If Trey just moves the needle five, just five degrees, I think that'll make a world of difference. And if it makes a world of difference for him, then it'll make a world of difference for the other players, for Nate, and then it's just a trickle-down effect. But again, winning cures everything. So in a month, hopefully, when there are all the five starters back and Bogey's completely healthy, maybe then we can have this conversation and it would be viable because you are still dealing with kind of moving parts and differences in the rotation. But we've heard from Tony Ressler in terms of what he appreciates about Travis Schlink, obviously, keeping him on board. So we know that there's an appreciation and a respect there. We heard what mm -hmm. Tony said about, uh, excuse me, what Travis said about Tony. So now it's interesting to kind of hear what the players' thoughts are because this does on some level affect them, especially like to your point, if Travis Schlink drafted you or if Travis Schlink traded for you. And in the case of John Collins, Travis Link drafted him, so John Collins also had thoughts. And, and I think the main thought for me that I, that I feel that with, with Collins and that kind of stood out, not necessarily what he said mm -hmm. to you, but it was just the tone, sure. right? The tone of it. And he was talking about as if, you know, Travis Link had died. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was, like it was just kind of like, so what are your thoughts on on Travis Slank and yeah you know it was great I remember when he was over there sitting there, over there right there in the old building and and he was just having those conversations with and I was just like man the dude is still alive he's still around he's still breathing why are we talking about him like this he's just stepping down he's still in the building right, right. so it kind of goes back to what we talked about a little bit earlier is the fact that this is the end for Travis Slank I, 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 I wholeheartedly believe that this is the end for Travis Slank and I think that you know, that's why, you know, even though organizationally it might not be that big of a deal or on the surface, mm -hmm. but this means that Travis Slank is going to eventually not be with the Atlanta Hawks because yeah. when you have guys like that talking like that mm -hmm. publicly, yeah. <laughs> imagine what the conversations are like within the locker room and, and yes. amongst themselves. So, though, and they don't, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you this, they don't match up. Uh, I'm probably saying it's a little bit deeper than what's, what they're saying on the surface. Yeah. And John Collins is arguably the hawk who tells it straight no chaser more than anybody else. No doubt. So, yes. Yeah. If you can pay attention to his tone and timber and pick up a little something, it may be something else. And granted, it could be something that's far more on the personal side than ever, because when you read the quote from Travis Schlink, it really does sound like that. So I would not be shocked if something comes out to confirm that. But I also know that there probably is a professional piece to it as well that isn't quite working well. You know, that's a big story here in Atlanta. And also there was another piece there, just a sidebar. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski did say, in addition to this story, a source confirmed for him that there are still trade talks for John Collins, which could be the Still challenge here as well. <laughs> exactly, because you've been trying, Travis Schlink at the helm has been trying to trade him for two and a half years now. So you got to wonder if that could be a part of this as well. Like, okay, we need to get him moved. So if Travis can't do it, bless your heart, let me see if we put Landry Fields in a different position and let's see if maybe he can get it done. But if you want to hear about this story or any of the other big stories like the reaction of the world, the switch heard around the world, Carlos Correa, or you want to get recaps of big games like the Knicks, unfortunately, smoking the doves, then you need to check out Locked On Sports today because that's where all of that talk comes from. And like you guys love to... Let us know about For the Culture. You, you'd like to check it out. Go ahead and check out Take of the Day. That's a part of the Locked On Sports Today show as well. And you can get it where you get us. Odyssey app, 
YouTube or wherever you download your podcast. So don't forget, after ATL Day 1s, you have got to make a stop at Locked On Sports today.